This is Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. Here's Johnny. Oh, wait, what do you want? You can watch! Hey, motherfucker. You never go ass to mouth. Now what is so damn funny? And here we go. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. The force will be with you. Always. But the truth! You can't handle the truth! What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to episode number 20 of the Fanboys Anonymous Movie Club podcast. This one is for November 2015, and we're going to be talking about James Bond films. A couple different movies, one from each of the James Bond actors. We're going to go down one by one in the order of the movie releases and talk about them, give you some opinions about whether or not we loved them, we hated them, ranking 0 to 10, our favorite stuff, our least favorite stuff, and just all around the board. You should know by now how the movie uh, movie club works. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the panel that's going to be talking about it. I am Tony Mango, your host as always, and I'm joined by Alex Grimley. Hello there. And Caroline Oliveira. Hello. So, as I mentioned before, 007, I was kind of disappointed that we couldn't do seven movies, but there haven't been seven Bonds unless we counted, you know, like David Niven and shit, and we're not doing that garbage. <laughs> But we're going to start off with You Only Live Twice, 1967 is when that came out. Sean Connery was the James Bond for that one. The Tomato Meter on Rotten Tomatoes was a 72% for the critics, 69% for the audience score. We had a bunch of different people that are carrying on to the new set of James Bond films. We just went through Spectre, and if you don't know what Spectre is about and you don't want to be spoiled... Sorry, but we're going to talk a little bit about that because Spectre involves Ernst Devereux Blofeld, and Blofeld and the Spectre organization are actually the main villains of You Only Live Twice. So before we start getting into characters, and uh, we're going to break down a lot of different things uh, for each of these Bond films, what do you guys think your first impressions, the first time you ever saw You Only Live Twice? I know Alex has seen it many times before. Caroline, was this the first time you ever seen it? It was. I mean, I... Mm. I feel like it was the first time I've seen the whole thing because I definitely remember being young and knowing who Blofeld was and his cat. So <laughs> maybe it's like the first time that I've seen the whole thing. Well, Blofeld is in all the – well, not all the – he's in, what, six Bond films? Okay, so maybe I didn't see this one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that they parody a lot. Like, okay. if you've seen Austin Powers, they make fun of yeah. Blofeld, Dr. Evil and stuff, and, you know, now that you saw Spectre, now you see, like, the scar and stuff, you know? True. Now, Alex, you've seen this many times before. The first time you watched it was probably around, like, 95 or so, right? Way back there, yep. How does this match up compared to the first time that you watched it? Do you remember? I think I probably like it less now. I don't think it's aged as well as some of the other Connery Bonds. In fact, I think it might be, in my opinion, it's one of his lesser Bonds. You know, I kind of have to agree. I ran into a situation before where I didn't like You Only Live Twice, and then I actually really liked it. This time around when I was watching it, it's just kind of shit. <laughs> like, it's not that good. <laughs> It surprises me that it has a 69% audience score. It, I don't think it really deserves that much. But let's start breaking down character-wise. Uh, villains is obviously a big thing in the James Bond franchise. We got Mr. Osato. We got Helga Brandt, uh, the discount Fiona Volpe, who's nowhere near as <laughs> sexy. If you are interested in the red-headed people from the Bond series, you want to see a really good-looking red-headed uh, villain... Watch Thunderball. Definitely. Thunderball all the way. Uh, I liked, by the way, um, there was a great little part in there where Mr. Osato believes in a healthy chest. <laughs> right. I love that line. <laughs> That's great. Um, and our main villain is Blofeld. Uh, what do you guys think of the villains of this? Do they match up from what a standard Bond film should be, or are they underwhelming? I think... Um... I'm always puzzled that that somehow a wealthy businessman gets tied up with uh, international global terrorists. I mean, we, we're going to talk about probably the same thing happening in Man with the Golden Gun. 
Um, the Mr. Asato character, kind of two-dimensional. Same thing with Helga Brandt. I wish we had seen more of her or gotten into her character. And we really don't meet Blofeld until the very end of the film. That is true. Caroline, what do you think about the villains? Eh! <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I love my villains, you know that. Uh, but this one, uh, I was kind of bored with them. Like, I enjoyed the cat. Does he count like a villain? Because the rest was just... Eh, okay. It almost felt like a cartoon in a way. Mm, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I think it's exactly what Alex said. I think, like, they just felt, like, so two-dimensional, but it just didn't feel... I I didn't really connect with them, and to me, that's a big deal, because I like connecting with my villains. I totally agree that there's a little bit more of a cartoonish thing, and some of the other movies we're going to be talking about, too, are even worse at times, and... uh... I wrote down a couple little notes. I mean, I went through here. Obviously, I had seen these movies before, so I didn't need to watch them like like a hawk, but I was actually trying to pick apart some extra little things and stuff. And one thing that I had forgotten about since it's been so long since I watched You Only Live Twice, but as soon as it happened, I was just like, oh my god, I remember thinking that this was weird, was Blofeld's line, Kill Bond! Now! <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, God, it's terrible. I think on our list of villains, let's not forget the, um, in Blofeld's, um, you know, his his indoor pond in the volcano. Yeah, the piranha. Oh, yeah. That's, like, one of those things that they ended up making a, a huge trope about the series, where it was just, like, the the villain with his secret lair kind of thing. And they have the hollowed out volcano in this one. And it, it's a little over the top. He's got to kill people with piranhas and uh, the, the falling <laughs> like the, the bridge. Set, definitely iconic. And Ken Adam, who did the production design in some of these early bonds, you know, I think people go wild for these really elaborate, huge, massive, like you're describing, underground lair sets. One of the most interesting things things for me watching You Only Live Twice this time was um, just some of the, the interiors. Uh, Henderson's, Mr. Henderson's sort of like modish Japanese bungalow, and then um, even Mr. Osato's uh, office. The furniture design, the colors inside. I mean, I know this is kind of an incidental detail, but... There's some beautiful um, images to look at in the film. Well, when they were going through this film, and they obviously they had like a, a big style change from some of the other ones because it's primarily set in Japan. And, you know, you take a Bond film in Japan, it's going to look drastically different from a Bond film in, say, like Russia or something. Right. Do you guys think that it kind of it, it encapsulated that whole... Uh, that atmosphere or was this like that they're on a sound stage and trying to make it look like it's <laughs> Japan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would agree. This the sense of place doesn't come through too strong except in the music. Which is such a shame because Japan is such it's so rich in culture. I I with other Bond films I feel like I'm in the locations with them and this one exactly what you said like I just felt <laughs> it was in the soundstage. Well, before we get into music because I, I definitely want to talk about music here, uh, I, I want to kind of keep up this idea of the the Japanese culture in this because there's mm-hmm. a lot of racism. Yes! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> And it's not only racism, it's also sexism, too. Like, two lines that I had written down that stood out to me. One was, for a European, you are you are exceptionally cultivated. <laughs> <laughs> but then they've got, like, the Japanese people in the movie are, like... Like, Bond gets fucking fake eyebrows and stuff? Yeah. God damn, like, what were they thinking? You could not do this movie now. No, I mean, we got to keep in mind, though, that, I mean, it's almost half a century old, this film, and back then, you know, racism was just okay. That's true, but still, <laughs> you got to imagine when they were doing this that they felt like assholes. <laughs> this was back in the days when racism was okay. They were probably all high, it's okay. 
Well, the, when it comes to the sexism too, Bond girls, big part of the Bond franchise. Uh, we got Aki, Kissy Suzuki, and <laughs> the giant pack of women that bathe Bond and uh, oh, what's his name? Tiger, um, Tiger, Tiger Tanaka. Tanaka, yeah. And <laughs> there's two lines uh, in that thing specifically. Tiger refers to them as my possessions. Mm-hmm. And he also says what I'm sure is Alex's favorite line of the whole thing, because we used to joke about this all the time. Uh, <laughs> in Japan, men always come first, women come second, which we always used to add, if at all. <laughs> 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 Just making it a terrible sex joke. Um, oh. I-, I love when he picks out the the one girl and he's like, oh, she is very sexiful. <laughs> terrible. Like, what the hell, man? Yeah, that's a new one for me. Sexiful. Oh, and actually, there's another line, too, that stood out when it comes to how terrible this is when it comes to the uh, race and uh, sexism and stuff. Why do Chinese girls taste different from all other girls? <laughs> <laughs> that in- exchange in the opening um, between Bond and, and I don't know who that girl is, the whole thing was kind of strange. She promised to, to give him a very best duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There or... <laughs> yeah, he really goes nuts about the duck. It's just like, oh, well, you know, duck is great and whatever like that. I sure hope that I don't get killed. Right. What did you guys think about the death stuff? Was that, like, just necessary or was it too awkward? Because it was filmed really weird. Um, Something told me that when he died, I just had this inclination that when Bond died within the first 10 minutes of the film, that that wasn't going to be the end of it. And uh, it turned out to be right. You could have fooled me. They do weird stuff in this franchise. We got, uh, they killed Henderson, and he came back back as Blofeld. Yes, that's right. And cross-dressing as well. (laughs) What did you think about the death scene, Caroline? Was that something that took you by surprise, that they would quote-unquote kill Bond at the very beginning of the movie? Not really. I mean, this movie, like I said, like I felt like it was so much like a cartoon that I just just went with suspension of disbelief and just like went with it. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna really need to really buy anything this movie shows me and just go with the flow. I just felt that it was probably some sort of gag or I didn't think it too much of it to be honest. What did you think about the duck? The duck. <laughs> I mean... I gave you very best, duck. <laughs> and he's like, Hey, thanks. Are you the one with the pig face? <laughs> oh. Does anybody think that that doesn't make any sense with Kissy Suzuki? That she looks like a pig? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be at the top of my list, uh, you know, for qualities in a Bond girl. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Aki better than Kissy, by the way? Definitely. Definitely. So much better. <laughs> Kissy should have been the one that got killed. She pops up in like the last, what, like 10 minutes of the movie? Right. That's so weird. I don't know. I'm, I'm used to like the, the Bond woman actually like mattering more. Yeah, and like like um, Carolyn was also saying, that it's that's kind of a terminal problem in this film. So many of the characters come and go, get killed in one scene, don't get developed. Yeah, you kind of just don't care. Really. I mean, I didn't care. It's just like, okay, next. So theme music is something that we brought up. Uh, Nina Simone sings the main theme. I love yes. You Only Love Twice theme. That's actually what, like, kind of one of my favorite Bond songs. It's not something I can listen to like on repeat constantly, but I think it's just awesome. She's amazing. I don't know shit about her, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely one of my favorite Bond songs. And also one of the better uh, John Barry scores. Mm, doesn't stand out to me. I guess because oh, it's all song. trying so hard to be Japanese. Yeah, well, totally. The 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 uh, music that... They had to compensate for the sets. <laughs> <laughs> What were you going to say about the John Barry score? Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. fine, fine. 
uh, the, the music that plays during the outer space sequences I really like. And then the funeral, uh, the music that plays over Bond's funeral is nice. The Japanese stuff, it wears thin after a while. How does the opening, the opening, by the way, when they're stealing the, the rocket or whatever, boring is all hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so frustrating to get through. But how does the song go? I can't remember off the top of my head. Do you remember? Uh, uh, well, first, the guy that's in Mission Control in uh, in, in, in the U.S. who says, um, the spaceship is opening up. He returns <laughs> as the submarine captain and spy who loved me. And he's like, the submarine is opening up. Opening up. <laughs> has a bad track record than his opening up and swallowing his ship. <laughs> <laughs> but do you remember how the song goes? Because the one song's popping in my mind, I don't remember if it's from this movie or if it's something else, but it's that bum, 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 bum. Was that this right. or Moonraker? That's in Moonraker, yeah. Oh, okay. This one is, um, this one is, uh, <laughs> It's like, it's like, ba da da dee da, ba 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 da da. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it does it for like three straight minutes. Yeah, and it goes way slow. Uh, let's talk a little bit about gadgets and action. We got little Nelly is kind of the focal point of the movie. That's the uh, big gadget, you know, this clunky. Uh, helicopter that can't possibly fly, uh, fly and for some reason they're able to start it by just spinning the propeller <laughs> stupid as hell it's one of the most underwhelming act sequences in the entire series and it's got the 007 theme in the background that bum, 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 <laughs> Copyright claims are going to pop up <laughs> for completely different songs because I'm a terrible singer. <laughs> but Caroline, what did you think about Little Nelly? Was that too over the top? I mean, I didn't think it was like too over the top just because I felt like everything else in the movie was like, Mwah. see, I'm trying to get musical too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess. Well, I feel like that that theory like contradicts a lot what I'm saying, but it's just kind of like I just needed something a little bit more energy, and she gave me some of that crazy energy, hmm. so I didn't mind her in a bad way just because everything else was bland and just not, I guess, texture enough for me. I gotta say, one of my least favorite action parts about this whole film is the other. Uh, one in the air, the airplane crash. What a ridiculous idea that they just put a wooden <laughs> plank over Bond's hands. And like, <laughs> Helga Brandt tries to interrogate him. And she's just like, you know, like, I'm going to kill you. And he's like, nah, come on, don't kill me. And she's like, all right, well then like, how about we fuck? And then he's like, all right, cool. So then they do that. And then it's like, they hop on a fucking airplane. And then she's just like, see ya. <laughs> And he's like, I can't get rid of my fucking, uh, this goddamn wooden plank. <laughs> right, it's right. It's terrible. Like, that's so laughably bad. I look up at the, what was the other one that I read down here? Oh, the rooftop scene, another action scene, where you can flat out see Connery not punching people. No. <gasps> camera angle more than anything, right? Like, they could have fixed it if they wanted to. <laughs> I would have thought that they would have looked back at that scene immediately and been like, yeah, we need another take of this because, Sean, <laughs> you're not coming anywhere close, man. Help us out. <laughs> you're punching, like, a guy on another rooftop. <laughs> I do like one action scene, though, and it's just for a sound effect. And it's not really an action scene, but it's, uh, Probably my favorite part of the whole movie, and it's so ridiculous because everybody's gonna be like, "This is your favorite part with hell," the ninja training sequence <laughs> <laughs> when the uh, the one guy for some reason is going da 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 da. Not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> 
out of all the ninja stuff, the first thing that they tell you is to be quiet and sneaky. Right, right stealthy. Totally. He missed that just, lesson there. Yeah, he's just going, no, 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 no. He missed that lesson. It's awful. <laughs> On a similar note, uh, during the um, sumo wrestling match, the referee s speaks in the most exaggerated. Do you remember this? He's like, <laughs> I don't remember that part of it though. But I don't put it past the, the film to do that. That's the thing. <laughs> One of our big takeaways in this movie is sound effects. Sound effects, yes. <laughs> Our other gadget that we had was actually pretty cool, I thought. It was the cigarette that is, like, an explosive. That was alright. That's classic. I mean, they could have gone crazier, like, another Little Nelly type of thing in the movie, and instead they kept that thing reserved, so kudos right. to them for doing that. Um, We kind of broke down all the different stuff that I was going to go over like that. Uh, what do you guys think of Connery as Bond in this movie? Is he phoning it in? Hmm. He said in an interview that he didn't like doing this one. Yeah, it shows. Right. He does seem a little bored, but not nearly as bored as in Diamonds Are Forever. <laughs> yeah, well, Diamonds Are Forever. Like, if you can get cheesier and weirder than You Only Live Twice, it's Diamonds Are Forever. <laughs> yeah. But more entertaining. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to rewatch it again. I haven't seen that movie in so long, but I don't remember loving that one. So... Our last thing we want to do to round out You Only Live Twice here, if you have any favorite or least favorite parts that we haven't talked about yet, and what would you rank the movie 0 to 10, 10 being the highest? Caroline, I'm going to go with you first. Anything that we haven't touched on yet? Not really. Like To me, the biggest thing in this movie was I was really bored, and it annoyed me that I just didn't really care about any of the characters. Uh, so with that... I'm going to give it a, um, a three. Alex? Uh, my favorite things about the movie are the sets and the music. My least favorite things are everything else. I'd give it a <laughs> three out of ten. I'm going to go slightly higher and give it a four out of ten, and that's mostly just because I do remember a time where I did like it. So. <laughs> it's not the, the worst sound effects. Film. Yeah, the sound effects are... I mean, the Dahu Dahu guy alone is worth at least, like, two points. <laughs> so, it's a movie that I would recommend to people to watch if you're watching all of the Bond films and stuff. You shouldn't skip any of them, except for maybe the one we're going to talk about next. But, uh... Yikes. It, it, nah, that, that's actually not even necessarily the worst one. Um, it, If you watch a movie like a Doctor No and you like Doctor No, you'll probably like You Only Live Twice... Because I consider Dr. No to be one of the worst ones and one of the hardest to get through, too. So if you like the, the campiness, the cheesiness, and the old Bond style, whatever, it might be your thing. But if you're more along the lines of somebody like myself who appreciates the movies that are kind of like the better structured ones and stuff, You Only Live Twice isn't going to be something that you watch twice. So that's our first movie down. We've got five more left to go, and we're going to move on in the next part to George Lazenby's film, and only film, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. If you are watching this on YouTube, then you got to click on Part 2. If you're on iTunes and Stitcher, you don't have to do anything, and we will be right back with Part 2.